speech and one on the chair. So thank you, Jim. Questions and the next event. So I thought we would talk to start with the Philippines uh, and that whole area. Um, so several administration officials were quoted as saying that they were disgusted at what they found in Mr. Marcos's luggage when he came to Hawaii. Um, do you share their surprise about the scale of his overall corruption when he was leader of the Philippines? Well, I'll tell you, I'm not going to comment on that. I think here now we're talking about something that uh, is there are legalities involved and uh, I think rather than comment on that, our interest is in continuing our friendship, historic friendship with the Philippines, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to let uh, the law and justice take its course, and we'll abide by the, the laws, but also that will involve uh, not just hearsay and gossip and so forth, but uh, a determination of what's actually happened. Um, I'll wait for that. Do you think he should escape prosecution by courts in the U.S.? I have said that I think that the laws of, of not only our nation, but the Philippine government and international law, or the laws of whatever country he may go to, should, uh, should be observed. And, uh, With no intervention? No. Or special treatment? That's right. So you think he should be, in a sense, prosecuted by, if, if anything? Um, if and when. So I'm, as I say, I'll... Let the law take its course. One more question the Philippines, sir. You said that you wanted to give Mrs. Aquino time to form a new government and create a cabinet and get things rolling. Um, why have you waited so long and not personally called her? I don't think there's been any occasion to, and I don't think that we can say that, a, uh, that she's through with the process or the business of getting her government uh, underway and going. And uh, we've maintained contact with her through our ambassador and, mm -hmm. and others. And uh, uh, there'd be, she's still organizing a government. Mm -hmm. No need to. Would you like to meet with her, sir, at some point? If that will uh, improve or uh, continue or help to continue the relations we've always had, uh, fine, I'll do whatever. Any prospect of that on your Asian trip? No, because there we're going to Indonesia, and uh, I'm going to meet with the ASEAN leaders. It's a meeting that was once scheduled and put off. Uh, there will be a representative of the Philippine government as a part of that meeting. But not she herself? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. I... Sir, on, on uh, U.S.-Soviet relations, uh, Mr. Gorbachev pledged to you in Geneva last November that he wanted to have a summit. And now he's been seemingly sounding like he really is not interested in it. Do you feel personally deceived? No, because I don't feel that any decision has been made. Uh, there was uh, one government official, not the general secretary, who discussed uh, with some of our people the possibility of a different date than uh, the June date we'd originally suggested. But that is not formal. That has been a formal objection to it. And uh, so far, I'm going to continue to operate, that uh, we're waiting to hear from them as to, uh, we've extended to say June, July. Uh, they had suggested possibly later in the fall, and we've called attention to the election that'll be going on here, and that that'll be difficult for us to. Late November? Uh, I did the other day say to someone that will possibly, if it went beyond then the election and before the end of the year, I don't think that, uh, I'd prefer not to wait that long. That then makes it a long time since the previous summit. And uh, I'm still hopeful that uh, it'll wind up June or July. I've got a little broader, sort of more philosophical question, Mr. President. Uh, you have a little bit more than two years left in your presidency now. Uh, and I know you had wanted to leave a legacy of peace. Are you concerned in some form that, that, that time is running out to reach a major breakthrough with the Soviet Union in the peace area? No, I don't think time is, is running out uh, to that extent of it being a, you might say, a kind of do or die moment here. Uh, and I guess I'm not surprised that, that the negotiations haven't been faster than they've been because if you look back at the pattern 
of such negotiations with the Soviets, uh, uh, there never has been anything, uh, any speed <laughs> in those negotiations. But other presidents, it seems, have been able to achieve some kind of breakthrough in arms control or some area that they could say really try to alleviate tensions. Mm -hmm. You haven't so far. No, that's right, because there's one fundamental difference. The other discussions and the other agreements that have been made and proposed have all had to do with the rate of increase in weaponry. And I said uh, back when I was campaigning that I'd stay at a table as long as it took to see if we couldn't get a reduction in the numbers of weapons. And this has never before been discussed with them. And the very fact that they have made proposals themselves calling for reductions is something new and I think something that uh, gives us cause for optimism. Under those other agreements, uh, the effect of some of them, uh, granted that they may have held down the rate of increase, but take uh, from the time of the agreement on, uh, on SALT II, they've added about 6,000 warheads in that time. Well, I don't, uh, maybe you can call it arms control in one way, but it certainly is an arms reduction, and arms reduction is what we need. But you sound like you're hopeful on U.S.-Soviet relations. Yes, yeah, because I think that they've got some practical, some practical benefits to get from them themselves. President, I wonder whether I might turn you temporarily towards domestic politics. This is an election year. First, may I ask about realignment, which has been a theme you've followed for a long time, partisan realignment. Do you think that Republican victory in the Senate this year is an essential to getting the kind of partisan realignment that you want? Will, in other words, will Will Republican loss of the Senate, would Republican loss of the Senate set the cause back a great deal? Well, it would be a, a setback, and then there would be another election for other senators in two more years. I have to say that I would, I would hate to see the loss of the Senate because I don't believe that we could have achieved uh, the things economically and in other fields that we have achieved if we did not have one House of the Legislature. To what degree do you intend to involve yourself directly in individual campaigns where Republican candidates are hard pressed in the next few months? I'm going to do everything I can on behalf of our candidates uh, uh, and everything that I'm asked to do. Travel, speak. Yes. If the Republicans were to lose control of the Senate, in what specific areas do you think you would encounter the most trouble? Where would that limit you the most in the rest of your term? Oh, that would be hard to that would be hard to, to speculate on. It would depend on uh, who was gone and who was still here. We've had, if you've noticed, uh, in the very beginning, even though we have a majority control of the Senate, uh, most of the major issues have found a bipartisan vote in there. With us losing some of our own Republicans to the other side, but with them in turn losing uh, some to us, and. Uh, that I think is a part of the, of the democratic process. The main thing with having the majority, however, is that that gives you the majority and the chairmanship of the committees. The right to control the agenda to a degree. Uh, yes. In, uh, I remember back in California, uh, I only had for one brief period, uh, a year or so, a bare majority in both houses of the legislature. But to show you what that difference meant, in that single year, after we attained that bare majority, we passed 41 anti-crime bills. All of them had been buried in a committee operated and controlled by the majority until that change where we became the majority. They weren't new bills at all. And strangely enough, those 41 bills that had been lying buried in, in those committees once they were brought out in the open on the floor, there weren't very many people that dared to vote against them. Sir, can I uh, change the subject to the issue of gun control? Um, you yourself were seriously wounded, tragically, in that event, as well as your press secretary, Jim Brady. 
in light of your own experience, in light of the opposition of various police groups, as well as Mrs. Brady to this legislation that's now up on the Hill um, on gun control, um, why do you support virtually um, no limits on gun control at this point? Well, I don't think that it is a no limit thing, but I'd like to point something out. Yes, I was shot here in the District of Columbia where the gun control laws are probably as strict as they are any place in the United States, where everything about the possession of that gun and the having of it on his person was against the law. Mm -hmm. If you will check those states, such as New York, and with their, uh, with all the, uh, the great gun control laws that they have, check the use of guns in crime in those states against states like some western states like in Arizona, uh, where there is very little of what we would think is control. But which is cause and which is effect? <laughs> the point that I think is made is that as long as there are guns, the individual that wants a gun for a crime is going to have one and going to get it. The only person that's going to be penalized and have difficulty is the law-abiding citizen who then cannot have, if he wants protection, the protection of a weapon in his home for home protection. Mm -hmm. What I think is, rather than gun control of this kind, when I was governor, we passed a law in California that I think is the most effective kind. It controlled or made more costly wrong people having guns, criminals in using them. We passed a law there that said that if an individual is convicted of a crime, such as burglary or anything, and had in his or her possession a gun at the time the crime was committed, whether that gun was used or not, add five to 15 years to the prison sentence if found guilty. Now that, if you remember back in England some years ago, lately there's been some talk that now we see the English bobbies uh, having guns and all. What has changed? Well, back in another day when they didn't carry guns, in England, in the old times, the carrying of a gun in the commission of a crime, you were tried not for the crime that you'd committed, you were tried for murder. It was considered that you had shown the intent to use that weapon by carrying it in the commission of the crime. And therefore, a fellow that was only a burglar said, wait a minute, I don't want to get threatened with hanging if I'm caught with a gun in my pocket. So the criminals didn't carry guns, and the police didn't have to carry guns. Mr. President, on another matter, on the shuttle, the, the shuttle disaster really shocked all of us. But the Soviet Union and some other countries have been moving forward with their shuttle, with their yeah. space programs. Uh, the United States is essentially grounded right now. Uh, what do you plan to do to get us back into the space business? Well, first of all, I think we must go forward until we know exactly what caused this so that there will not be a repeat of it. Let's not go forward. Yes. We want to be able to assure those ladies and gentlemen who go up there as astronauts uh, that every provision has been made for their protection and safety, which all of us more or less had assumed was, was true before. But once that's straightened out, then I believe we must go forward with the program. And I, I think, Jerry, you'll find it was interesting that my first calls to the bereaved families, every one of them said to me, please, don't let this program be stopped by this. The program must go forward. But other countries are already going ahead. Yeah. And are you concerned that the U.S. is losing ground at this point? I don't think the period involved here is going to, we, they, were, they were going ahead anyway, and uh, What's wrong with the exploration of space by others? Uh, we've, uh, there's been a great cooperation. You know, we've had uh, their people come and uh, go up with ours so that they would have some experience in this field. Time to talk about the Contras, I guess. You lost yesterday. You said you were going to keep fighting. My first question is, how do you intend to keep fighting? beyond the Senate, and what are the project, what are the prospects in the Senate? What are you going to do after it passes the Senate if it does? Well, uh, first of all, my loss was only the loss of a vote. The people who really lost were the people of Nicaragua, who I think have a sacred right to struggle for freedom. 
And it's, yes, I feel badly about this, and I think the outcome was a mistake. But I do know that uh, they have admitted the, the House itself, in fact, the leadership told their own people that there would be another chance to vote on this uh, after the Easter vacation when they came back, that there would be another vote. The Senate is dealing with it now. We've been discussing with the Senate leadership here uh, what they're going to do, and, and this coming week they're going to have their vote. Now, the Senate votes this. When the House comes back, that Senate bill that has been voted will go to the House. And once again, uh, we'll make our, an all-out effort you, to get this passed. You mean that you expect the same bill to go back to the House to be voted on again? You, you don't expect to have to make any modifications? We've been discussing with the Senate uh, something we didn't have time to do on this one, and that is my proposed uh, executive order Being included that I would be willing to see that included as, as legislation. But with that exception, okay. you expect essentially the same proposal to go back. You don't, have to, you don't feel that you'll have to change the proposal to get it through the House? Uh, there may be minor changes. I don't know just what's on the Senate's mind. They haven't passed their bill uh, yet. But uh, it would have the general format of the what we did. The million yes. still? Huh? The yes. The million dollars? Yes. And then, uh, um, and you know, there were many ramifications about the, or restrictions about the use of that. Uh, I do know that there were people in the House vote, uh, from my own contact with them, uh, who expressed a wish that my executive order uh, was legislation. Um, so that might be a, enough to change. Uh, you think that that, m t that more or less technical I think, change would be enough well, to get Well, just by a contact that I had with some individuals and, and uh, knowing that they voted against us, but things that they'd said in our discussion leads me to believe that some of them will uh, will change. Would you be w willing to make any change on the hundred million package or on the timing or on anything else in order to assure House approval the second time around? I don't think uh, that I should uh, suggest anything of the kind now. I, this, this was a very close vote and uh, I know that there were individuals in there who uh, uh, did not feel uh, sure about their position and the way they voted. Uh, there were many people that had some minor thing that they thought could uh, enable them to vote the other way. And uh, Before there is another House vote, Mr. President, do you have any intention of talking with the Democratic leadership or with others to try to smooth the way a bit for the second go? Well, it's too soon, I think, for us to be uh, come up with a, a new strategy on this. Well, let me ask you just one more quick question, All Joe, right. on the old strategy. Some people speaking with the usual anonymity on your own staff, some people, Republicans included in Congress, speaking without anonymity, said after the vote yesterday that the rhetoric had been too hot from the White House, mentioned Mr. Buchanan in particular, and criticized it and said that hurt. Do you agree with that? I don't think that the rhetoric was. I think the rhetoric was play, played and reported, and indeed that the media added in, in its interpretation of the rhetoric, and it was not fairly portrayed, but I feel very strongly, and I think all of us do, and all that we're pointing out is that every bit of proof and evidence that can be asked for is there that Nicaragua is literally already a satellite of the communist bloc, and its goal is the continued expansionism of communism worldwide. And I think that what, what some of these people whom I was quoting meant was that a lot of members of Congress, a significant number of members of Congress, given the closeness of the vote, felt that their patriotism had been impugned. And it hadn't. It hadn't. It, there, no one's motive was impugned at all. There were efforts to point out that the clear issue here was one of attempting to halt the establishment of a communist bloc base in the Americas with all that that portended 
and on the other hand, to permit the going forward of such a communist expansionist move. And this, in other words, this wasn't, a, as some tried to portray it, this wasn't the usual legislative battle of both having the same goal but differing on the way to reach it. This was, here were the two goals and they were separate and we were trying to call attention to this fact. Uh, I think that it was, Democrat? I think that the use, I'll have to tell you, if you talk about shrill rhetoric, I listened on C-SPAN to a, a portion of the debate on the floor. And some, not all, I'm not impugning motives at all, but some of the opponents of our program engaged in some of the most scurrilous, personal attacks against me, for example, the most dishonest use of distortions and outright falsehoods that I have heard in a legislative debate. Why do you think that was done? I, I guess they were very hungry for victory. But uh, you said we, there were two separate goals, Mr. President, in this debate as opposed to the usual pattern of no, different results. means to reach the same goal. No, but results, two different results. To vote one way was to continue to fight against the creation or the continuation of this communist government. To vote against that was in effect to simply say that there it was and uh, we weren't going to do anything about it except sit back and keep asking them to change. Well, what's the well, motivation for that as you see it? Why would somebody say it's all right to have a communist government in Central America and we can't do anything about it anymore? Why would somebody do that? I think all of the, the specious arguments that were used uh, against us, that uh, this was only a forerunner to my desire to put troops in there. You're looking at an individual that is the last one in the world that would ever want to put American troops into Latin America because the memory of the great colossus of the North is so widespread in Latin America, we'd lose all our friends if we did anything of that kind. And, it, and they, we haven't been asked. What we've been asked for, uh, by, uh, for people down there who want to try for democracy, who need the tools with which to do the job. Did what these, uh, did these legislators Congressman, do you think exceed the bound boundaries of fairness in their debate? Yes, and remember, I'm only talking about several yeah. in there. There Would you are, care to name there names? others. What? Would you care to name names? No, I'm not going to name their Would names. Would you care so to exclude? Why don't anybody? you rerun the? Why don't you rerun the but tape? They, but they did, right. in your mind, exceed the boundaries of fairness. Yes. You think they'll continue? Uh, sir? Huh? I mean, you think that the debate, as the debate continues, that well, they feel so strongly. Maybe they will when it comes up again. They'll do the same thing. All right. But again, the flat declaration that uh, I was going to uh, open a war with involving the United States, their flat declaration that the things that I had said uh, about the situation in Nicaragua were lies, they weren't true. Well, there is one thing about this job, and even with all regard to the information available to a legislature, the president does have access to all the information there is. And unfortunately, some of that information cannot be, or the proof of it cannot be used because it would compromise sources, it would endanger other individuals, and it would render uh, impossible further use of intelligence sources. I haven't, seen you, I haven't seen you steamed up about anything hmm? in a long time, as you are uh, in this issue. Well, I just, uh, the subject came up about shrill rhetoric, and I just thought uh, so far, you know, they've only been pointing the finger in one direction, and frankly, I think in the wrong direction. Mr. President, another area. Uh, Iran has really has been having recently some successes in, uh, on the battlefield in its war against Iraq. Are you concerned that Kuwait or Saudi Arabia might now be in jeopardy by Iran? Oh, I think we have to be concerned about that. Uh, you know that. Uh, Earlier on, it's been fairly quiet for a time now, and because of uh, uh, actions taken uh, by 
the Saudis and others to show that they were willing to defend themselves. But uh, yes, the, the potential for throwing a match in the powder box is, is there in the Middle East. And uh, I believe that Saudi Arabia has been uh, largely responsible for helping a continued stability there in the, in the Gulf. Are they threatened, do you think, by this kind of, will Saudi Arabia be Well, as you, you recall, there have been, uh, uh, earlier there were some attacks on ships and their waters and so forth, and there were forays into the, their airspace mm -hmm. that made them then mm -hmm. uh, establish a, a patrol uh, mm -hmm. and to, uh, chase other planes out of their airspace. So can I ask you a, local uh, a New York question? Um, New York City has just, after considerable debate and controversy, has just approved a bill banning discrimination in housing and jobs for homosexuals. What is your position on that? Well, I know that this is a very touchy question, and I am, I am one who believes in the rights of the individual, individual freedom, but I do have to question sometimes whether individual rights are being defended in this particular field, freedom of the individual, or whether they are demanding an acceptance of, of their particular lifestyle that others of us don't demand. For example, a, should a teacher in a classroom be invoking <coughs> their personal habits and advocating uh, them to their students as a, uh, as a way of life? I don't, teachers habitually don't do that. They're, they're but this personal bill I don't think really covers that. It basically, it, it basically guarantees to homosexuals equal treatment in hiring policies, in, how, in gaining housing, these sorts of things, essentially applies the same anti-discriminatory measures as are applied to blacks, as to women, to other people. Do you think that's all right? Well, as I, I've, I've said, but again, I, uh, I haven't actually involved myself in what this law contains up there, so I don't know what I'm speaking of, but what I'm saying is that uh, how would we feel if a teacher, male or female, a heterosexual, insisted on the right in the classroom to discuss their sexual preferences and why, and uh, whether they believed in complete uh, uh, right. promiscuity or not, uh, we would be quite offended and think that our children should not be exposed to that. Well. Tax increases, Mr. President. Well, 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 would you vote against it, do you think? What? If you were a member of the city council, would you have? <laughs> I'd have to see what the bill uh, Okay. The bill, the bill was. Tax increases. I don't want them discriminated against simply no, on that basis as to housing and jobs no, and so forth. I, on the other hand, don't want to give them uh, uh, privileges beyond what right. the rest of us have. Okay. Well, this is the last question, so I'll make it a double question. Uh, Tax increases, you've got Senate Republicans coming out for a tax increase. Do you have problems with that? And we would like to give you a chance to respond to Jimmy Carter, who said some not too uh, favorable things about you in a recent interview with the New York Times. You said uh, you distort things. You well, the first thing about the tax thing, I've made it plain. I, I not only do not believe that a tax increase is needed, I believe it is counterproductive and it could threaten our economic recovery. And therefore, uh, I am going to oppose a tax increase. Now, we have some revenue increases in our own budget plan, but they are increases in the, not in the amount of revenue we're going to get. That stays revenue neutral. But they are increases in uh, fees, for example, that will be paid in return for certain services that presently are being paid for by all the taxpayers. We think it is only fair to do this. Uh, we have, we also have in uh, there some sales of assets that we believe the government would do well to get out of 
certain ownerships and businesses it's in. But the total revenue remains neutral because those increases are offset by loopholes and so forth, things that we close. Now, I'm afraid I'm not too familiar with, can you be specific? What are one or two of the things that he might have said? Well, he said that you have a habit have of saying things. Yeah. You've got folks waiting yeah. Okay, he said that you had a habit of saying things that you know are not true, basically. Uh, Most of the things they've called gaffes, the great majority of them, I have been able to document that I am right and they are wrong. And one day there was a press conference in which it, after it, I didn't know that you fellows all talked to each other so much, but every story of the press conference came out with six, all the same and six in order, grievous errors that I had made. I can document, but everybody told me I'd be sounding defensive if I made it public. I can document that I was correct in five of the six, and in the sixth it was kind of a toss-up because I had made a reference to the marriage tax penalty and that in our tax program I used the word eliminate. Well, eliminate, yes, when the tax program was fully implemented was correct, but at that point I should have said reduced because it, it was phased in uh, what we had done as so many elements of that so tax program was. All the time. Uh, <laughs> no, so um, I don't have a habit of saying things that aren't true. Uh, why didn't Thank he just Frank. why didn't he just accuse me of lying? <laughs> what do you hear from home about the chances of beating Cranston? Anything? Uh, I understand from all reports that he is probably as vulnerable as any Senate candidate. But our problem is uh, we've got virtually a football team candidates against it and how this is going to react in sort of sorting it out and getting down. Well, forget you're still on the record here. That's all right. I think I said that. <laughs> he is welcome. You can, you can trust us. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you again, sir. Yeah, but, okay. <laughs>